chaos in the Commons, MPs walking out in protest over the Speaker's handling of a debate over a ceasefire in Gaza. The government does not have confidence that it will be able to vote on its own motion. For that reason, the government will play no further part in the decision this House takes on today's proceedings. The government turning its back on the whole business after the Speaker broke decades of convention to allow Labour a vote on its own ceasefire position. It allowed Starmer to avoid a massive rebellion and opposition MPs to yell about foul play as they dragged the Speaker back to the chair to explain himself. I was very concerned, I am still concerned, and that's why the meetings I've had today is about the security of members, their families and the people that are involved. I have tried to do what I thought was the right thing for all sides of this house. It is regrettable and I apologise. All of it messy. The SNP Westminster leader who called for this debate absolutely furious. The SNP has been stitched up to the point that the Labour Party were the only game in town today. Now, there's going to be some serious recriminations for this, I would imagine. I've said to the Speaker himself that he is going to have to convince me that his position is no longer intolerable. Labour adamant there was no backroom deal between Starmer and the Speaker. We had the chance today to show Parliament at its best. A demand to end the fighting now, to free the hostages now, get much more aid in now, and a ceasefire is respected by both sides that lasts. Instead, this is Westminster at its worst, a row about procedure that does nothing to help the Palestinians and does not advance the course of peace. It was meant to be a debate over the terms of a ceasefire. Instead, it turned into an unedifying row over the conduct of the Speaker and Parliament itself. What could have been a moment of unity instead turned into an utter farce. There is fury around Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who is now fighting for his political life. And from some MPs, there is fury too that this debate has been used as a political football to draw dividing lines and stoke divisions ahead of the general election. These fractures between politicians only stoking community divisions. It's dreadful the way it's been going, really. I mean, the way Rishi's handling it is awful. I think Labour did that. <laughs> That's just my humble opinion. It's a lot of lives have been lost on it. It's absolutely awful. All the politics in this parliament make little difference to the fate of those in Gaza. But it has serious implications here at home. Well, Beth joins me now live from Westminster. So condemned as a circus, Beth, what is the likely fallout of tonight? Well, I... Honestly, in all my years of reporting here, I've never seen anything quite like it. The mood in the chamber and outside in central lobby where I was tonight was sulphurous. Jess Phillips, uh, the MP in Birmingham, came out throwing up her arms and saying to me, if we can't agree a form of words, how can we possibly ask people to lay down arms. Look, what, what was going on today? It was meant to be the SNP uh, putting Labour under pressure over a ceasefire. Uh, but what actually turned out was Labour ended the day uh, being the party, the first party to pass through the Commons a call for an immediate uh, ceasefire. Um, so in a way, there was a win, if you like, for Labour, but I don't think many people are winning over there tonight. In fact, there's a lot of people losing and Parliament uh, losing perhaps some respect amongst voters. For a starter, it's a full-blown crisis now for the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. He was so uncomfortable in the chair when he was called back. Tonight already 30, over 30 MPs are now uh, calling for a no-confidence motion in the Speaker, so a very pressing crisis there. Uh, and also in terms of losing, we've all seen the spectacle tonight of 
MPs fighting each other over the terms of a ceasefire rather than trying to come together to send a message to the Middle East, uh, not just for the people there, but for divided communities here. And I'm sorry to say that if you found all of this really unedifying tonight, be prepared for more, because what this was all about was electioneering and political parties looking to a general election aren't trying to find common ground now. They are trying to find dividing lies, whatever the issue. So I'm sorry to say, if you didn't like what you saw tonight, you're going to see a lot more of this sort of thing in the coming months.